See, I crossed the traffic light for like the thousandth millionth time a couple of days ago. And I thought, okay, this is a privilege not many can afford. See, I grew up in Indonesia and I had the privilege of being well off and lucky enough and blessed enough to have a car to drive me around to places. But in Indonesia, I couldn't walk around. I couldn't cross the traffic light, walk on the streets. I couldn't just go out and walk to get something because number one, um, the grocery stores were probably pretty far away from my house. And secondly, well, I'd get robbed. The roads were probably chaotic. So I'd probably get crashed by a car. I had to really, really take care of myself. One time I was crossing the roads in the central business district of Jakarta and that five minute walk from one building to another right opposite the road across right across the road was really frightening and my parents had to keep reminding me to take care of myself to prepare to watch out Oh, I don't want to paint Indonesia in this one big stroke. There are many beautiful streets you can walk down. Bali is a world-renowned travel location that you can walk down and you can meet locals and talk to them. And I'm not saying that every single street in Indonesia is filled with crime either. But the problem is, in less developed countries and especially in less developed areas of these countries, I can't deny the fact that the streets aren't as usable and accessible and as safe to use as the country that I'm privileged to live in now, which is Singapore. We never think about traffic lights and whether or not people can cross roads as an indicator of poverty or of how well a city or a country or an area is doing. But, and I'm not saying they should, but maybe, just maybe, we should start to humanize poverty. Okay, I'm sure most people think and know that poverty is bad. Things like no access to water, less disposable income, human rights, standard of living. All these things are things we know. But we've never actually humanized them. In posters, we either see statistics, numbers, percentages. One in how many people die, one in how many people can't get water. And that's all good. But we're all visual creatures. We all think and see in a visual manner. That's why movies work in the first place. Because an image in the mind and the story is more powerful and more impactful than any number. Now, I think they should have more of these pictures, stories, videos of people suffering from the effects of poverty and so we can find more of the causes of them. Because if people don't remember the suffering that poverty and low standards of living actually inflict on someone, then they'll forget to help them completely. They, it, we don't remember numbers. We don't remember graphs. Because if we did, then, well, things would be done. We remember stories. That's why... That's why... Well, the Batman. That's why Kid Batman happened. Because we cared about his story. Because we wanted to help his community because of his story. Not because of the graph of how much the kid loved his community. And, okay, this may be off in a little tangent and not directly related. But think about Jaws and about its effects on, sh on our fear of sharks. Like, there is no reason in honesty, for us to be scared of sharks. More people get killed by vending machines, but because Spielberg didn't make one about vending machines, he made one about sharks. In the end, now a lot of people have a lot of fear of sharks. And that's what we need. Storytelling ability is now seen as a negative thing when it's used to push causes. People think that, oh, you're using a narrative, you're using feelings to push your own cause. But in the end, believing in a cause boils down to feeling. It boils down to you feeling motivated to support it, to champion it. So if it's a good cause, like helping people 
not starve, helping people elevate their standard of living, we should use this tool. Or only the bad guys will use it, and then we will all fail.